So you're a pothead and you want some cool comics, specifically with your pot-addled mind in mind. Well, guess what? I've got the list for you, because that's what I do. Let's begin with Dan Klaus's epic comic series, 8-Ball. This series, which ran mostly in the 90s, I think, is the art style changes, all kinds of different random characters come up. It's very, very zany, I have to say. Very zany. Check it out. Let's go now to the king of the underground comic scene himself, Robert Crumb. He has been published in multiple different ways, but Fanagraphics released in, I think, 18 volume set of the quote-unquote complete Crumb comics, although there's actually material after that. What I'm talking about specifically, the times when Crumb was doing the most LSD and weed and so on, those stories are just out of control. So I think if you want to zoom in on that era specifically, go to the complete Crumb comics, volumes four to seven. Those are, to me, the killer era. I love those comics. About the same time, another epic artist and writer of the 20th century, Jack Kirby, was also doing some of his best work. And that collection, uh, that, that storyline, is called The Fourth World Saga. And originally it was published in four comics, Jimmy Olsen, uh, The Forever People, New Gods, and Mr. Miracle. But they've been collected in different ways. I think there's even a one volume edition out recently. And it is an epic storyline, epic science fiction, epic fantasies, and with elements of superheroes thrown in. But the art, Kirby was doing his best work in the late 60s, early 70s. The dialogue is really weird because Kirby, his, his, the way people talk is just very strange. But the more I read this series, I didn't like it at first, actually. I liked some of the art, but the story I didn't care for. But every time I read it, I get more out of it, and I think it is an incredible book full of ideas and just had Kirby been able to release the complete fourth world epic it would have been. But what we have is still pretty amazing and I'm glad we have it so check it out it is a wonderful book. Next another epic but modern and very very different. I recently talked about this guy Simon Hanselman and his awesome comics that have there have been several collections at this point and he's in process right now so you can jump on board and see an epic in the making this is a storyline epic but very very different not not i don't even know how to describe it check out the review i did of it but very very funny a lot of pot humor but i don't know if you have to be a pothead i only read it while i'm stoned next let us jump to the 1950s where Mad Magazine had its debut. I'm specifically zoning in on Mad Magazine under Harvey Kurtzman, the great writer-editor, and the work that came out of that time, it was just so unusual. I mean, it was really critiquing 50s culture and the, the weirdness of that. So I think it is a precursor, but also an instigator of the 1960s. Very funny and very unusual stories, and I still think they are wonderful if you're a pothead, especially. While we're talking about Mad Magazine, I have to mention Alan Moore's Tomorrow Stories. This is, in many ways, a tribute to Mad Magazine. A lot of people don't think of him as a funny writer, but he, he certainly has a funny side to him that is never more apparent than in this series, Tomorrow Stories. Check it out. Next up, the work of Michael Cooperman, or Cooperman? I don't know how you say his name, but the book that I specifically love and recommend is called Snake and Bacon's Cartoon Cabaret, and it's as wild and crazy as it sounds. I've never seen Cooperman do better artwork. He, he seems to have chosen a, a faster style in his later art, and I understand why, because the artwork in this book is meticulous. It's like a woodcut. It is so detailed and wonderful. And another super talented artist from nowadays, Jesse Jacobs. I have read all three of the books that I know of by him, and they're all wonderful. I love them all. And take a look at some of this artwork. This guy is out there. Yeah, you'll love his books. The three that I've read are called By This You Shall Know Him, Safari Honeymoon, and Crawl Space. All three wonderful. Next, let's take a look at two staples of 1990s alternative comics. First, The Sandman. This is an epic story of Dream and his siblings. The 
eternal, not the eternal, the endless, <laughs> get, the, get the name right. It's being adapted to a TV series, so you could jump on board and beat the rush. These comics, I forget how many volumes there are, there's at least 13, I think. The first few, I have to admit, I didn't really care for. The art, I didn't care for. And the storytelling was just kind of like, felt like 70s horror. But around volume four or five or so, it really picks up. And some of these, like Fables and Reflections, Brief Lives, perhaps you just want to go for the best. And those would be my suggestions, Brief Lives and Fables and Reflections. They, in some ways, they stand alone, but there is a larger story going on. And then another epic, but a different kind of epic, Grant Morrison's The Invisibles. This series, for me, was, in some ways, this is the most influential book I've ever read. And I'm not gonna give away any spoilers what it's about or anything. I mean, there's elements of conspiracy, H.P. Lovecraft, fake news, things that at the time, in the 90s when it was published, I don't think they were nearly as mainstream, but now, like, people know, like, H.P. Lovecraft characters. It's, it's strange how things that never seemed like they would be mainstream have made it. Morrison, I think, was starting to do uh, more drugs at this time. Before this, like, Doom Patrol was his dream work and so on like that, but The Invisibles, he was in full-on pop mode, and you can tell in a lot of places. Finally, let's conclude with this may be my all-time favorite comic. I just love Crazy Cat. I never get tired of it. It is a, a comedic voice and an artistic voice as important as, as Shakespeare or Charles Dickens, in my opinion. This is a true artist. He worked on this book for over 25 years, I think. And we have collections. Fanagraphics has released the Sunday strips. Unfortunately, the daily strips have not been reprinted. Maybe we can generate enough interest in Crazy Cat. Maybe you can send some emails to Fanagraphics like I've done. Tell them to reprint the daily strips. That'd be awesome. Buy everything you can. Buy George Harriman. I love his work. I haven't read that biography of him yet. I really want it because I'm curious. How much of a pothead was George Harriman? You can read the liner notes in those uh, Sunday strips but there is certainly some pot humor in it in a very subtle way, but you don't need to be a pothead, but if you are, you're, you'll love Crazy Cat. It is wonderful. Possibly the greatest comic strip of all time. So there you go, a lifetime of comics reading as you get high. If you've enjoyed this little review snippet thing, please subscribe, it would be cool. I'm gonna talk more about books and comics as I always do, and we'll both be grateful. See you there, bye.